Well, we're ready to go home now, all packed up, handy having a big car. And I have to say, in weather like this, it's nice to be able to start the climate control before you get into the car. lead-acid batteries is they are very heavy, just like anything with, with lead in really. They also can't take very many charge-discharge cycles before they're worn out. They do have a few advantages over other types of batteries however. They can supply a huge amount of current for a very short period of time. They are, they are very good at that. So, what's the ideal way to use a lead acid battery? Well, lead acid batteries like to be as charged as possible all the time. So, the best thing to do with a lead acid battery is basically keep it charged and not run it down below 80%. The next kind of battery are the nickel based batteries. And these are sort of the next lots in terms of age as well, generally speaking. And they have also, you know, they've, they've got more power density than lead acid batteries, certainly. And they're much lighter than lead acid batteries. And they can take about the same number of charge cycles, but they, they work a bit differently in that the nickel-based chemistries have something called a memory effect. So in order to keep your nickel-based battery nice and healthy, the thing to do is to charge it up to full and then run it down to empty, and charge it up to full and run it down to empty. And another downside of nickel-based batteries, they also have quite a high self-discharge rate, so if you leave it on the shelf somewhere, it's just going to run down to nothing in no time. That's one of the reasons why the garden-powered machinery, like hedge cutters and stuff like that, from a decade or two ago, that would have been powered by nickel cadmium batteries probably, and then nickel hydride possibly after that. They all, the, the battery would basically die in the space of a year or two, because what would happen is you'd use it, and, when you, and after you'd used it, you'd charge it up and put it on the shelf, and then over the next six months when you don't need to cut your hedge because it's winter, the battery will run down to absolutely zero and damage itself by doing that, just sort of just through self-discharging. The memory effect is also quite an irritating effect from the point of view of keeping a battery because it means you can't just top it up whenever you want, or if you do, you you know run the risk of reducing the lifespan of that battery somewhat. And then we get to the more modern batteries, the lithium-based batteries. And there are many, many different kinds of lithium-based battery, but they are more power dense and, and lightweight than other types of batteries. They take a much greater charge-discharge cycle. Like typically a lead-acid battery can be discharged something like you can charge something like 300 to 800 times uh, a nickel based battery it can be anything from sort of 500 to 1500 depending on what the exact chemistry is we're talking about and the lithium batteries are all generally one to two thousand charge discharge cycles your charging habits with lithium based batteries should be slightly different to with nickel and with um, lead acid batteries because lithium ion batteries like to be kept in the middle they like to be stored around 60 percent they don't like to be charged up to full especially not if they're going to be charged up to full and then left warm for time that will cause the electrolyte to uh, react with the cathode i believe it is 
and uh, and it will basically just reduce the capacity of the battery, aging it. And they also don't like to be run down to a low state of charge. They're not they're not happy with that either. That will reduce the capacity of the battery over time as well. For all of these chemistries, heat is a bad thing, by the way, and that's the, the, the clue there is in the word chemistry. It's, a battery is a, is a chemical reaction that pumps electrons around a circuit. So, as it's a chemical reaction, that means it's got reactive chemicals in it. And when you heat up reactive chemicals, they react quicker and they can do new uh, new reactions, reactions that you don't necessarily want, like reacting with the cathodes and anodes in the battery. It's the power density and the longevity, particularly the longevity on the shelf, so to speak, but also the charge cycle longevity that has really sort of enabled the modern era of uh, consumer electronics to blossom because it's made things like mobile phones possible and electric cars as well now just and over time I, I think they're going to improve the chemistries and the power density to the point where electric airplanes and helicopters will be an achievable and practical reality although obviously we're not quite there yet batteries will power basically everything and enable technology and uses of power which are previously not possible. I mean in particular things like renewable energy. Renewable energy is great, it just doesn't turn up when you need it, but if you put a battery there, a big powerful battery that is capable of being flexible and having a good uh, lifetime in service, then all of a sudden renewable energy becomes massively more useful and in many ways it becomes the best kind of electricity because with electricity you have to match the demands with the amount that you produce pretty closely otherwise the voltage goes all over the place. So if you have a battery it's brilliant because a battery can change its power output you know, second by second, whereas a power station, you know, it takes time to turn generators on and turn them off and things like that. So, yeah, I'm, the future of batteries is bright. I, for one, won't particularly miss the age of oil anyway. Dirty, smelly stuff. You might have noticed there's a bit of a common theme in my vlog, and that is basically batteries. I've just realised I don't have any lunch for Tesla, so we're going to have a little treaty lunch, hopefully. Something yummy. Unfortunately, there's no supercharger here, but that's okay. I think we'll just grab and go. I hope I fit through this this drive through. Maybe we should go in. What do you reckon Jasper? Should we eat here? Or should we take it home? And eat it home. Okay, let's eat it here. Daddy has decided. In the car. Oh not in the car, no, we're gonna go into the goodness gracious. No, we don't eat food in the car. Absolutely not. Oh joy, a bill. I don't mind getting bills like that actually. I hope you found today's vlog post interesting. If you have, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and give it a big thumbs up. 
and I'll see you tomorrow for the next instalment of my daily vlog. Bye! <laughs>